Hi there church, family and friends. We are in 2 Corinthians 1 verse 23 through to 2 Corinthians 2 verse 13. I know we often do a little recap, we put it in context, but I really think it's important today to remind ourselves of what is going on here. Uh, The Apostle Paul has gone to Corinth and has preached the gospel and many people have turned to Jesus. He has formed them into um, multiple households, churches. He has raised up and appointed leaders. He has then left to go on elsewhere, including Ephesus, to plant more churches. And at some point they sent him a letter with all their problems. He replies with a letter, that's 1 Corinthians. He intends to go back to them. Um, but he isn't able to go back to them for maybe a two-year period, passes. They write to him again, and then he replies a second time to Corinthians. That's the letter. And um, I think it's important to remind ourselves of that because um, this is about family. This is about relationship. Uh, And when you read this passage today, I don't know if you you notice this, but it just reads so fast full of emotion, of, of, of family relationship. And um, just to pick up on some of the contrasting words that are used in the NIV, it talks about joy and pain. It talks about grief and grieving, and it talks about gladness. It talks about rejoicing, and it talks about distress. It talks about tears and love. And of course, this bit from verse 5 onwards, punishment, but also forgiveness and restoration. And um, it just made me think, you know, we know that we believe that church is family, probably when we get all the sort of spread of emotion evoked in us, because that's what family does when you have the the highs and the lows of emotion. It's uh, true for us as a church at Frontline. We are passionate, a passionate bunch. And so it's not surprising that some things make us glad and some things make us mad. Of course it will. We are family. And that's why I think we need grace for one another, particularly in this season that we are in. I was really just struck by some of the nuance and detail of some of the uh, words and phrases that Paul used today. Verse 24, talking about leadership. Um, Paul talking about how he leads. He says, um, not that we lord it over your faith, but we work with you for your joy. What a fantastic description of godly leadership. It's not about lording it over. It's not about um, domineering. Um, But actually, it's working with others for their joy. And perhaps that's a really good test for us all in our leadership today, whether it be leadership in our families or our workplaces or in the church. Does our leadership of others lead them into joy? Um, I I, I love that bit where it says then in verse um, in verse one, sorry, in the end of chapter one into verse one, it talks about um, standing firm by faith. And I just thought that's so encouraging in the season that we're in where we are actually really having to dig in our heels and stand firm that it's not through religious effort or duty, but it's by faith. We believe it and we receive what we need from God. Then the next bit that stood out to me was this idea of grieving and and, and uh, th- there's been sin and brokenness and Uh, bad behavior in that community we read about it in 1 Corinthians and Paul says actually it grieves us all there's that sort of unified um, emotional response towards sin made me think of Romans 12 that talks about weep with those who weep um, rejoice with those who rejoice that collective shared emotional experience and I did think I I wonder if um, if sin still grieves us when when we when we see that around us or in our own hearts, whether it still grieves us in that way. I mean, often when you hear people talking about the sin of others, it's in in such a self-righteous, superior way. But this is like a brokenness. It's like, oh God, we long for more for that person, in that person. 
And I, I do think this probably, this section here probably just relates to um, 1 Corinthians 5. If you remember, there was a discussion about expelling the immoral brother, putting them out of the fellowship. And um, if you go back to that passage in 1 Corinthians 5, that, that word to um, put them out, uh, to expel them, um, I understand from listening to people like Timothy Keller is the same word for a dislocation of a joint, putting the shoulder out of joint. The point is to be um, reconnected, to be brought back in. And this is what's happening here. Um, Paul's saying, look, that, that removal from Christian community has resulted in repentance. So now forgive and comfort and reaffirm your love for that person. It's just so beautiful, isn't it? And I think we can all feel a little dislocated in, in these days. Um, perhaps we've imposed that upon ourselves because we've not pressed into community. Perhaps that's just because of the circumstances and relationships uh, that we've not had around us. Whatever it is, I'd encourage you to press into community uh, with grace, with forgiveness, with love in this season. Uh, after all, the enemy, we're not unaware of his schemes he would seek to keep you isolated. So spiritual warfare today is community. Bless you all.